How to make a grilled cheese sandwich with Keenan Brand. First step in making a delicious grilled cheese is you gotta be hungry. Next, you gotta put together an outfit because you're not gonna have everything you need. You're gonna have to go to the grocery store. I picked a white shirt because I expect that I'm gonna wear leather black boots and black boots and black pants together and a black shirt. That will, that's just too much black. So I get my outfit together and I get ready to go to the store. But before I go to the store, I guess I should check what kind of inventory I have in my fridge. So I go to the cheese drawer and I have a couple of ends of cheese, but I really think I should use nicer cheese. I got a little bit of bread, but it's not good bread. And I check the fridge for other stuff. I find some peppers and some beer, but nothing else that I can really use. I have some butter, but I don't think that's the right kind of butter. I want more Irish butter, something with some more, you know, heaviness to it. Before I start, I gotta make a snack for myself because I'm hungry. So I'm gonna make a fried egg. The easiest way to make a fried egg is in a small pan. I take the pan and I put it on the thing. And I take a palm sized amount of oil and I put that into the pan. Just kidding. Put a little bit more oil and you're ready to go. Now you wanna turn on the pan and you wanna get the oil smoking hot. But first, you're gonna to wanna to crack your egg. Make sure you have a little bit of salt so that when you crack your egg into the thing, you can put the salt in there. Looks like I'm almost out. So I'll probably get some more of that later. Crack the egg with one hand and add a little bit of your salt. Oops. There's a shell in there. I'll get that. And use my hand and get that right out. You can use the shell method, but I was in a rush. Once the oil is smoking, that's when you wanna add your egg in. That's how you know it's ready. So take a couple steps back and lean in. Now pour your egg and you'll watch it start to crisp up. The edges are gonna get brown, but that's okay. Put a lid on to heat it up even faster. Now you're gonna take a spatula and move that over to your plate. Look how perfect that yolk is. Unbelievable. This is one of my best eggs yet. Add a little bit more salt and a little bit more pepper as well. It's pretty hard to grind pepper with one hand, so I ground some more off camera. Next, you're going to have to sit down to eat it. So get your fork and crack that yolk, because you want to spread it all over the whites. Look at how crispy that is. Delicious. Now you wash the plate, and you're ready to go, because your stomach is a little bit full. So grab your keys, and get in your car, and head over to the grocery store. There's a ton of grocery stores to choose from, and so on the drive over, you realize that you might need a car wash. So you pull into the car wash, and you get your mask and you put your mask on and that way you'll be safe. Here's the car wash. Take your card and try and use the machine. But the machine is broken. So you got to go get some coins. This gun's pretty cool. So I go to my car and I look for some coins, but there's not enough quarters. I usually keep coins in here for parking and stuff like that, but it seems like I just have small coins right now because we're not really using cash. So I go back to the machine and see if I have any ones. I do. So I guess I'll go to the bank and get some change. Head down to Bank of America because that's where I keep my money. I pull into the driveway, but there didn't seem to be anybody there. So I headed up to the door to go in, but it was locked because the bank's closed on Sunday. That makes sense. So back to 365 we go. Guess we're not getting a car wash. This is gonna be hectic because it's close to Christmas. So I'm gonna be in and out and hopefully use the express line. So I grab a basket because I'm not gonna have a lot of things. Roma tomatoes. Um, let's see what else. We got some rosemary. Gotta get some basil. 
and one white onion and some garlic. I realize that when you're making a grilled cheese sandwich, you have to make tomato soup too. So I'm getting all the things for that as well. Here's that butter I was talking about earlier, Kerrygold. That's the stuff that I use. Get some more eggs, cause you just ran out and add those in. Next up is the cheese. But this is gonna be a fancy sandwich that I'm making for an interview. So I can't use regular cheese. I need fancy cheese, 1883. $6, perfect. Vintage, $4, perfect. Now to the chicken broth. They say to use unsalted, but I'm not worried about my salt. Now for some bread. There's so many types of bread, it's hard to make an informed decision. So I always go with the bread that's not fancy like the take and bake, but trustworthy like Dave's bread. Cause there's a large chiseled Greek man on the front. And that's something that I can get behind. So I grab Dave's white bread. White bread's great, because we're going to be covered in butter and cheese. Thanks, Dave. Now we go to uh, the line. Oh, no. I forgot something. We got to get ham. The inside of the sandwich always has to have ham. That's because you got to have something to chew on in there. Got to get some salt, because we just ran out. Tomato paste. And some peeled tomatoes in a can because it calls for it. And because I like the branding. So you get in line, but that line's too long and we're express anyway. So we go over to the express line and start checking out. One thing at a time, starting with the bread and the broth and the eggs and starts putting stuff back in the bag. There's probably a more efficient way to do this, but I was filming, so I wasn't really thinking straight. Next step, your bags are full, almost at least. If you accidentally scan something uh, on the scanner while you're putting it back in your bag because you were doing it a kind of inefficient way, you're gonna have to clear that item. And because you did that, it's gonna call over an attendant. So step back while she takes care of everything. When she asks you what happened, just tell her that you accidentally did it when you're bringing it back across. She'll understand. Whew, that was close. Now we're out of here. Grab your two bags and hit the road. Oops, you forgot to pay. Classic. It's probably because you're filming. So grab your thing and swipe it in the thing. Approved. Great. Now we're on the road. Headed home to make our grilled cheese sandwich. Pull into the garage, not too close, and lay out all the things you just got at the grocery with a cutting board. This is when you realize you had a ton of garlic anyway. How much you ask? I don't know, like 30 cloves? That's crazy, but I like garlic. And today we're gonna to be using a good amount of it in our tomato soup and grilled cheese. Maybe not the grilled cheese. Start the oven baking. You want it on 425, because you're gonna roast these tomatoes in that oven. Get the garlic out of the way and put some parchment down in a glass baking sheet. This is where we're gonna roast the tomatoes. So put a Roma tomato on the cutting board and cut it. Some people like to use a different kind of knife, but I'm a global stainless steel man, tried and true. Try and cut it with one hand, it's hard. But use that knife like a sword and you can do it. Told ya. Lay out your tomatoes in a fashionable fashion and crack into the peeled can that you bought from earlier. It's hard to do with one hand, but I believe in you. Now that it's open, pour it into a separate bowl. But wait, you're in a white shirt. That's not good for tomato soup. So run downstairs to put on a different shirt, preferably one that's dark colored. I chose black, but you can choose whatever color you want. Once you put it on, you're ready to go. Back upstairs we head to open the can pretty dangerously with a knife. I know what you guys are thinking, why didn't you use your fingers? Because my fingers are thin and could potentially bleed. So here we go, the can's open and we're gonna add that into a bowl because we wanna separate the juice from the tomatoes for now. So grab you a little thing of garlic and accidentally set down your phone for multiple frames because you're in a hurry and you want to get this right. 
once you realize you've messed up a couple of frames, by then you'll be editing the video and it's too late to go back and reshoot those frames because it's dark outside now. So you just kind of leave it in there because it's funny and you think that people will understand that this video has more of a human aspect to it and that not everybody is perfect all the time. Okay, once you've got all the garlic broken down, you're gonna wanna add that over top of your tomatoes. It's very important that the garlic and tomatoes are touching because you're gonna want some of that flavor to try and infuse. Garlic is hard to peel with one hand, let me tell ya. Okay, now that you got a small chunk, drop it into that baking pan, but try not to get the wire from your phone charger in there too, cause that could contaminate the food. Next step is to realize that the sun's setting. It's five o'clock in Italy, let's pop open this cab salve. So grab your bottle opener and open it up, but not before you record it. Now we're ready. Cheers, everyone. Now take those tomatoes and separate them from the liquid because that makes the most sense for the thing we're about to prepare. But once you do that, you might realize that the liquid is the good part and you actually do want to include that. So grab the bowl and pour that liquid over top because it doesn't really matter anyway. It's all gonna get ground up in the end. So what's a little bit of extra liquid? Who cares? Next step on the list is olive oil. So add that olive oil over top and prepare the tomatoes to be roasted. The oven's now piping hot and we're gonna throw those bad boys in, but not before we open up our new fancy salt. But with one hand, it's gonna be hard. So grab you a pair of scissors and snip off the top of that bag. And we'll pour that back inside of our salt container. But wait, the salt doesn't all fit. We'll have to get a bigger container, but that's for later, not now. Add the salt to the tomatoes in the pan and you should be good to go, I think. But not before you add a little bit more spice. What kind of spice? One-handed pepper and a little plant I like to call rosemary. Here it is, one-handed pull, and attempt to get all those sprigs off one at a time. There they are, beautiful, aren't they? Now sprinkle those on top for a little bit of extra flavor. People love rosemary, and this looks like Christmas colors. Yay, Christmas. I'm hungry already. Just watching this video, I'm hungry. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna mix it all up because we wanna get that salt and pepper evenly distributed throughout the entire thing. Plus, we're gonna be grinding it up in the end, so I'm sure it'll be good. Once that oven's hot, take it and pop it in there. Those babies are gonna roast for 45 minutes. Now we're ready for something else. Oh wait, start the timer. That's right, that's the smart way to do it. Now let's dice that onion. While that's roasting, we're gonna need this onion. Oh. I used my knife like a sword again, but we're gonna need this onion to be caramelizing. We're gonna get those pieces translucent and we're gonna add a little bit of tomato paste. So chop that up with one hand again and try not to cut yourself while doing it. Luckily for you guys, I never cut myself, but I did cry just a little bit. Once you got your pan, add some more olive oil. This is a pretty large pan because I cut up a whole onion. Light that baby up and bring over your cutting board with your onion on it, but not before you get the oil and kind of turn it around a little bit. Dump in the onions and you're ready to go. Stir those every three to five minutes because that's what it says to do online. And that's how you wanna make the perfect caramelized onion. It's okay if you forget about them a little bit and they get burnt, that flavor is gonna go straight into your tomato soup. Plus, we're gonna be adding tomato paste and that's definitely gonna roast a little bit in the pan as well. So make sure to keep moving those and maybe add in a little more olive oil. Now we're getting a good color. It's time for the paste. Gonna have to open that with one hand too because filming is difficult. So pull that baby out and pop her open. Nice branding. Squirt that in. It looks a little like toothpaste, but I promise you it's 100% tomato. So mix that into the batch and you'll come to something that's a little more red in color. 
And that's exactly what we want. Boom shakalaka. 18 minutes left on the timer. We're gonna be good. And look how those babies are coming along. Steamy. Grab out the uh, tomatoes once they're fully roasted and put them on top of the stove. Cause we're gonna let those set just for a few more minutes. While we do, we're gonna get out the blender and mix up the tomatoes. We're gonna take those and put those into the blender because we're gonna grind them all up into a fine puree. All that liquid that I said was good, don't forget about that. We're gonna have to put that inside. So grab the paper and pour it in. Turn on your blender and we're ready to rock. Beautiful tomato soup, piping hot, straight out the Vitamix. Move around the mixer to make sure you get everything ground up and smell it, delicious. Take some more basil. They say about a cup and a half, but I just used as much as I could to leave some for later. So put that in and now the caramelized onions. You can move the spatula and try and just drop them off the pan, but they'll kind of be stuck. So you'll probably have to sit there for a second or eventually get the spatula. Now that we're ready here, put the lid back on and grind away. Now you've got four flavors in one soup. Delicious. Grab a pot and find a little extra piece of basil. Perfect. Add your soup from the Vitamix back into the pot because we're not done yet. We're gonna take a little extra something to turn it into a creamy, delicious soup. Clean off your Vitamix because you don't want that tomato to get stuck on there forever and you've got roommates to take care of, remember? Pour that out and let's get back to work. Now we've got the soup. We're gonna turn that on high. Mmm, fiery. Take your heavy whipping cream and add half a cup of it to the soup itself. Some people don't like cream and you can substitute that with broth if you want. Doesn't matter to me. This is just the soup that I decided to make. Mix that in, mmm, creamy goodness. Next, take your chicken broth and get that into the soup as well. But not before you stir it all in. They say to add the whole thing of broth, but I don't want my soup to be that liquid. And I'm gonna need some more room if I'm gonna add the whole thing. So I take the soup and I move it to a larger container because that makes the most sense to me. So I take the broth and pour it in there, but not all of it because it started getting a little too liquid and scared me. Once you're done there, mix it back up and add in a bit more salt and a bit more pepper. And if you have it, oregano, that's the stuff. Pour that in and let it simmer for a minute. Maybe even mix it up because you want those spices to soak up the goodness. Now give it a taste. Wow, that's even better than last time. Who would have thought? Not me. A little bit more pepper and a little bit of uh, Old Bay hot sauce. Hard to come by. That's from the East Coast. Now you're ready. Let that baby simmer while we finish up the rest. Take that pan from earlier and clean it off because we got to make some grilled cheese sandwiches. Take those fancy cheeses and grate a nice pile of cheese for yourself. Perfect. Now we're gonna take the cheese and we're gonna take the bread. Lay the bread down on the cutting board and butter both sides. I know you're asking yourself, both sides? That doesn't make any sense. It does to me. If you want that crispy outside on your grilled cheese, you're gonna need butter and cheese on both sides of the bread. Grab your chef's knife and apply. Do your best to not cut yourself again here. Knives are dangerous. Take some cheese, sprinkle it on top. Just a little bit though, this is the side that's gonna go onto the pan. Once you've done that to all six of these slices, you should be ready to go. I'm cooking not just for myself, but for a couple others too. So be generous with your spread. Next step is butter on the pan. Delicious. There's no shortage of butter in this meal and that's what makes it taste so good. Move the pan and spread that butter around and put those cheese side down 
on the pan. Now that you have it going, let's grab that cheese again and add that on top of the bread. The only way to make a grilled cheese is with cheese and bread and ham. Grab a little bit more cheese, sprinkle sprinkle baby. Now grab some ham. You don't want to put it straight on, so rip it up and check on your soup. Perfect. Grab your trusty spatula that you use for grilled cheese making and flip those two sides together. If it's a stuck to the tray or the pan, that's fine. It's going to be crispy and that's what you want. Once it's perfect crispiness, grab that baby off. You're going to put it onto the cutting board and cut it into triangles because that's the best way to eat a sandwich. Grab some soup and throw it in the bowl. Remember that basil we saved from earlier? Guess what? We're going to use it. So plate it up and enjoy. This is one of the best tomato soup grilled cheese recipes you've ever had. I can almost guarantee it. Thanks for tuning in. Later.